Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today talking all about the big TNA Slammiversary 2015 show that's coming up. This is actually TNA's first pay-per-view since moving to Destination America. This last show um, was uh, a little bit of a, of a failure. I never really heard the numbers come out, but it didn't seem like people were really excited about the whole uh, Bound for Glory uh, Japan um, sort of uh, experiment uh, that they did try. TNA was able to, you know, basically get an arena, get a ring, uh, get uh, a lot of collection of talent, um, you know, for basically next to nothing um, by be going over there and uh, focusing on the uh, Japanese company that they were helping out with the Great Muda, um, putting a great light on them. Definitely, Japan has a lot of wrestling organizations inside of there, and Wrestle One isn't really one of the biggest ones. So, them having TNA come over and host one of their pay per views there was a little bit of a light on there. But as you've seen, um, you know, the Wrestle One has pulled out a lot of their wrestlers away from TNA, um, and uh, they're, they aren't really together anymore. <laughs> um, so, they're going to be doing this show um, from the Impact Zone, uh, basically because of Destination America's idea to move. Impact um, from Fridays to Wednesdays. Um, there was a whole big mess because Impact had already gone to the Impact Zone and recorded all the shows that they thought was, were going to be used up into the Slammiversary Go Home show, which was going to be a live um, show that they were going to shoot for Destination America. Then, you know, they had the move and they did the math and they said, hey, we don't have enough shows. Um, so basically, the main event that they had planned for this show, which was being advertised, which was EC3, Aaron Carter III, going up against Kurt Angle, for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship is basically being moved to a television show. Um, you know, it seems they have seven shows on the books. Kurt Angle's not there. I don't know if that's because they don't want to see Kurt Angle wrestle two matches and in, in, in two nights. Uh, they don't think his body's going to be able to go through it. Um, they have some matches that people are... Excited to see um, James Storm versus Magnus is a pretty big feud. They're going to be having a non-sanctioned mass, and people are talking about that. You have the big King of the Mountain match with Jeff Jarrett making his return, which was being billed as a um, championship match. But as of right now, there is no X Division title on the line. There is no World Heavyweight title. That the champions not even in the match. So I don't know what they're going to do with this. Jesse Goddard versus Roddy, Robbie E. Uh, the breakup of the Bromans. The Dollhouse, one of the hottest girl groups there is in wrestling, going up in a three-on-two handicap match. Awesome Kong and, and Brooke. Uh, you got Lashley and uh, Mr. Anderson going up against Mr. Main Event himself, EC3 and Tyrus. And then you have Bram uh, versus Matt Morgan making his return to wrestling. And then um, enable to make it where they can have their finishing match of the best of five series. Uh, the, the Dirty Heels um, versus the Wolves. Davey Richards will wrestle in Austin Aries. And in this match, the winner will be able to pick the stipulation for the uh, match number five. Seeing how they've already you know gone out and did Full Metal Mayhem, the TLC I don't know what you can do for the best of five unless whoever wins this match just picks a flat out wrestling match because that's what these guys are wrestlers. That's the only thing I can think of of what they would do from here on out. We've seen them do just about anything else along the way. Um, TNA is sort of hit right now with uh, you know bad news. Almost every day we hear news of uh, a wrestler is leaving the company. Austin Aries has his contract ending on Wednesday. Uh, James Storm was tweeting away today like it was you know his last weekend in TNA. Um, you know all good things come to an end, but he did it his way. Um, this is going to be a show. It's it's not going to be great. Uh, one of the things that I'm looking at the most, I want to see that James Storm match. I want to see what Jeff Jarrett does in that King of the Mountain match. Um, I don't think he's going to win the championship. But there is that last little bit of hope that maybe he's going to be able to pull it out and see where this Global Force versus TNA thing is going to go. When Jarrett was on the show, they let him wear his Global Force shirt. They let him talk about Global Force. He brought up the fact that he had been in talks with his... Um, you know, his uh, his sort of money man and, and Toby Keith, the guy that was, you know, putting the money into as an investor into Global Force. So uh, we'll see um, what's going down. Uh, but uh, lots of things on this show. We're going to have to see if it's just a wrestling show or it's going to be good. It's going to be weird because this is going to be filmed live on Sunday. 
And um, whoever is there Sunday more than likely was there on Saturday when they filmed the show that's going to be airing after this. And you're probably going to see a lot of the winners, um, you know, talked about it in their promos about how I won at Slammiversary. Um, it, it's smart that as of right now, you don't have the title on the line. But uh, it brings a big question to me on, you know, where is Kurt Angle? What does the King of the Mountain match mean? Have they ever done the King of the Mountain match where there wasn't a title involved? And how do you change the rules to make it where um, somebody's going to be able to come out on top? Lots to talk about with this, though.